So guys, I got uh, sidetracked there. My wife interrupted me and was wanting to um, have me help her out. She's building some barn doors, but <clears throat> I think I left off talking about the um, clear water type minnows. Um, then I have my dirty water type minnows, you know, shad type baits. Um, once again, just going back to the clear water for a brief moment here, this is that 3DB. This is that Yozuri bait that I'm really super proud of, um, but it's in that more subtle color. The thing is, is that when you compare, when you compare this ghost color with this, this one's a lot louder as far as the color, right? But the difference is, is that this has a mirrored finish on the inside and that mirrored finish flashes in a way that it doesn't allow the bass to get a good look at it. So if I hold it against the light kind of, I have a light coming from this corner of the uh, room. But if I hold it against the light and I just kind of, you know, go like this, it's just like a shine. The fish doesn't get a good chance to like hone in on it and figure out what it is. They just see it and they just strike. It's like a reactionary type thing. Um, so that's one exception to like the subtle coloration thing. It is on days with sunlight. The best time to throw this bait specifically would be as if it was sunny and windy. And that wind would break up the profile a little bit. The sun would break it up a little bit. It would just be the ideal condition for it. So that being said, I want to go back and start talking about this this dirty, dirtier water uh, shad type deal here. So I have like a white, which is just a straight white. This is a suspending Norman bait right here. Um, it's it's just plain flat white, and um, you know, shad aren't just white. But the thing is, is that in dirty water, I'm more concerned about the primary colors of the bait rather than the like subtleties. So white is the primary color. So I'll throw a pure white uh, crankbait and just get their attention. You know, more than I would just throw something subtle. Just throw a flat white. Boom. It has fleck in there and stuff that that makes it uh, you know shinier. And see if I direct the light over away a little bit. That's in my room. Maybe you can see some of that shimmer. But you know that's a good one. Also in the in the dirty water or the dirtier water. This one here. This is like a uh, sexy blue back herring, and this is honestly my favorite crankbait color. Period. Um, I like that one a lot. I was gonna say, you know, I, I mentioned on this bait here that it was like the primary colors white, you know, went through that whole spiel. The same thing applies to like these baits up here that are supposed to mimic like like perch, you know. Um, perch aren't perch aren't powder blue and chartreuse. But the the logic behind it is that these are primary colors that are found in a bluegill, perch, sunfish, whatever, what have you. And I emphasize those colors by bringing them out, making them more pronounced on this crankbait. So it's the subtleties really just apply to the uh, the clear water, you know, clear water baits like like this one right here. Uh, I can get it out. Okay, this one here. Like, see, there's all those really pretty airbrush details and all that stuff. That's more of a clear water situation where I'm like, oh, they're gonna get, they're gonna really look at it, and it needs to look as real as possible. You know, it's either I take that approach in clear water, where hey, I want to make it look as real as possible, or I take the approach that I mentioned, where I do the ghost minnow. I just said I don't want them to see it at all. You know, uh, there's two ways, <laughs> two ways of going about it. Either it needs to look real or they ain't looking at it, and they're just seeing the profile. But, so that's kind of my clear and dirty water type stuff. Here's another really good one for dirty water that I throw that looks shaddy, kind of shaddish, but it's, you know, smaller. A lot of times, um, pressured lakes and 
then also when the bait that's swimming around is smaller, I'll throw smaller crankbaits and they catch a lot of fish. So, you know, in any tournament, especially in a guiding situation where you have clients who just want to catch fish, of course they want to catch big fish, but to help them just get some fish in the boat, it's great to throw like a smaller bait like this. You get a lot more bites in a tournament, you know, catch five fish and then upgrade, um, you know, something bigger. But, uh, and then, you know, I've got these, like, what I said. So they're all segmented. You notice how I have my categories and everything. That's so key. So key because when I'm in a, in a, in a hurry and i got to make a decision, I just look at my box and boom. I don't have to look around for my, you know, perch forage. I got it up here. I don't have to look up, look around for my clear water, uh, you know, shad forage. It's right here. Boom. Everything's organized. The other species thing, I have this crankbait here. This is that super red crankbait. Um, once in a while I throw it, it's, it's good, it's super loud, it's uh, pretty bright, but in a clear water situation, maybe I'd throw it in more of a neutral, subtle color. I think that would be excellent, an excellent choice. This in itself is probably better for something where you have a pretty, you know, moderate stain to the water and uh, maybe even a little cloud cover, something that, you know, decreases the, the uh, penetrating light. So. That's one instance in where I'd use it, but like I said, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you would throw this in that more stain type situation, but at the same time, a majority of the year on those stain lakes, the fish position shallower. So, especially in the winter months, whenever it gets, uh, you know, cooler and the fish get on those rocks to get warm, um, you know, the sunlight's hitting the rocks and all that, um, I'll use a, use generally like a like a square bill. There are exceptions where they kind of uh, get off the, you know, off the bank a little bit and are on that outside break where the rock transitions from, you know, that type of, uh, well, it transitions from rock to, you know, um, gravel or whatever else it is below that or sand or whatever. That line there, that seam that, that's formed, a lot of times the fish position on there when the conditions aren't ideal. Um, and that sun's not really beating on those rocks, and that's when I would throw something like this. Uh, the other one is like this, this, uh, you know, I, I think it's technically some other species. I, I, you know, it's, it's silly that I don't remember, but to me it looks, what it represents to me is it represents to me some sort of hybrid striped bass, and there's a lot of them where I live. Um, there's a lot of them in Waco and you know this is just a good bait for that reason is why I bought it because I know that they eat them I, I know that they do they eat they're opportunists so that's why I have that in my box but um, you know everything's super organized when I review um, not only my crankbaits but I go through my you know different soft plastics and everything like like I had said I have a box of just craws um, I have a box of just flukes. I have all my terminal tackle organized by uh, size and weight, uh, style, everything that I need in order to do my job efficiently. So I hope that helps you out. I think that if someone would have showed me this early on, it would have, uh, you know, vaulted me into a different level. Um, but now I know, and now you know. So thanks.